slow. Why not? After 8 p.m., because the light changes. You can't even tell the rainbow in my awesomeness. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am doing a very special video. It is a collab video for the channel, Miss Fucking Wonderful. Miss Fucking Wonderful has a kind of a mix of a channel. She does a little bit of gossip, a little bit of makeup, and some lifestyle chit chat kind of things. So I saw on one of her videos that she wanted to do another collab. And I guess in the previous time she had done the peach palette. And she invites anyone, anyone that watches her channel to use this tag and uh, we can all support each other. So I think that's pretty fucking cool. So, this is my take on the Urban Decay collab. Again, it's Miss Fucking Wonderful's Mayday Urban Decay collab. Yes, I think that's it. So if you want to see how I created this rainbow look, just keep watching. I'm going to start with my face and maybe something will come to me. I very seldom do show like a whole face of what I'm doing because I figure you guys have seen all that before but you know I watched a lot of the other people's videos and they talked through a lot of it so that's what we're gonna do I already moisturized and now I am going to prime with a little bit of benefit primer potion um, so anybody that is coming from Miss Fucking Wonderful's channel thank you for stopping by because that's it's just so cool to support each other through YouTube um, because it's such an incredible community. You just, you don't even realize it. Because you know what? Like, my own people, my friends, my family, most of them don't watch my channel. Um, I just kind of keep it to myself. You know? I don't want people to talk shit on you that are your friends. It's not very cool, huh? So I have been mixing the It Cosmetic CC Cream and the Becca filtering whatever crap. I got this 50% uh, off. I wanted to try it out. I don't feel like it's pigmented enough to actually use to like give your foundation glowy, like put it on and then put your foundation over it. Um, but I feel like if you mix it, I'm getting some use out of it. Like I bought it, I'm gonna use it, you know? And everybody raves about it, so I'm wondering like, is there a learning curve that I missed here? So I take a foundation brush and I brush it on. Um, so I've been seeing a lot of bigger YouTubers complain about drama channels lately and I don't really understand it. Like most drama channels do let you know ahead of time, like hey this is all for fun or don't send hate so and so's way and yada yada. And I don't understand, like publicity is publicity and if these channels are mentioning you, you're getting a mention and some people become you know not relevant and this kind of brings it back you know do you have a favorite drama channel does anybody even know what I'm talking about like, there's a channel that I absolutely love number one because she's mouthy as all hell and uh, she makes a lot of really good sense her name is Petty Page and she just makes really good points anyway I am now doing the buff. For a little more coverage, I have been doing a cosmetics, like cream and a CC or something. I like it. It gets a little dewy, so I definitely have to set it with powder. So besides, you know, makeup channels, I was watching makeup all the time. All the time. That's all I wanted to watch. And then watching drama channels kind of showed me the other end of beauty. And I understand it's a business, especially when you're seeing things like, for anybody that follows along, um, anytime there's drama with someone like uh, Jeffree Star and he's got spilling the tea with Too Faced Cosmetics and all that kind of stuff, you realize that a lot of the friends that may agree are less likely to pipe in because that's their business. It's the same thing, like I work in a place and I signed a contract when I was hired. I'm not allowed to talk about 
things that happen there. Like I could get fired or sued or whatever. And it, it's just like if there was something that had happened in house and news reporters were outside, I say my casino was robbed and news reporters were outside. I don't think I could talk about it. Um, and that's kind of the same thing. Like if you're supporting the family or your lifestyle, there's a difference between having integrity and having, um, like kicking yourself in the foot, you know, kicking yourself in your own ass, whatever. So I understand why, you know, someone like maybe Laura Lee or Manny aren't going to say anything uh, to tarnish Two-Face. Now they're already going to be guilty by association because they're friends with Jeffrey. But, you know, they're not going to run their mouths because that's a company that they've worked with and I'm sure made money off of. So I get it. But you didn't really see it because we saw YouTubers as all of, they were our friends, you know, they were suggesting us their favorite products and they were teaching us things along the way. And then you kind of saw the other end of it. And now you have to learn as a grown up to take everything with a grain of salt, which we should anyway, but sometimes we just get sidetracked. All right, so face is pretty much completed because we're not going to spend too much time on that. And I'm going to warm up a little bit the skin with the NYX Wonder Stick. And I'm going to try out something that I haven't tried. This is called the Unicorn Unit, the Unibrush. Unicorn Brush? Unibrush? Brushy Corn! That's what it's called. It's called the Brushy Corn. So I use this one or the Anastasia one. I'd like to get one shade darker. I'm kind of trying to take out a step in bronzer. Because I'm trying to stick to all Urban Decay products that I have. So if I have it, like blush, whatever, I'm going to use it. But I don't have any Urban Decay bronzer. And I usually blend this step out with my beauty blender, but we're just going to try it so I can see what this brush is like. I actually have a whole video and I'll link it um, up here somewhere so you can watch my little demo and review of the brushy corn because it's pretty cool. out my nose area with a spongy. Bye Bye Under Eye by It Cosmetics because it has a very strong pinky tone for those really stubborn darky areas. For me, those dark areas are in here, kind of along the nose, because I actually go quite light under my eye, like immediately under my eye, but not right, like right here, no. Tart. I like to put everything on my hand. It warms up the product, you know? Then it makes it easier to move around. Instead of like, cause you don't need to go Cause this stuff is super pigmented. I recently started taking my concealer, setting it with my finger and this letting it go. So that way it can really set into the skin and blend. In between, I either spray directly on my face depending on how much I need it or onto my beauty blender. Let's go in the face. <sighs> literally plays on my feet when I'm doing these and uh, you know she has to because if mommy doesn't get to do this mom might go crazy so I'm taking a little RC make no color powder I don't bake baking does not work for me I'm too old and I just press it in bread smells sweet what are you eating color to my face. I'm going to grab my favorite bronzer. This is Physicians Formula. This one has become my new favorite and I would like to thank Liv Loves Her Makeup. If you are not familiar with her channel, Chick talks super fast, but man she can get through a video. She can talk about more content than any other person. It would take me hours to talk about the amount of stuff that she does because she just goes right to the point. I don't even think she edits her videos. This is one of those videos that's going to be incredibly hard to make because my camera keeps turning off. It gets too hot. So now is the part where I usually go in with a powder foundation to kind of blend everything together. But I'm going to try something different first. It's called draping where you're doing two steps with just blush. So I've already done some bronzing instead of contouring. We're going to just try that. Okay, let's just try it. 
So you're supposed to go in with like a brighter blush and then use your less bright brush. Let's do crush. Okay, we're gonna take a little crush. Don't ask about my brush, it's bougie as hell. This brush was ridiculously priced, but it's so beautiful. Take in the blush and you are kinda like creating the cheekbone with the blush. Brush hardly picks up any product, so it really worked for this technique. Brush, blush was scaring me. Okay, then you go on to the regular cheek part with something that's not crazy. So you're kind of blending it. Ooh, that's pretty pink. It's all right, this is supposed to work out with powder on top. Whoa, getting drag queen vibes right now. I should have gone with something a little not as crazy. So I'm gonna clean this off with my fake little switch. This is not the real one. I got this one from China. AliExpress people. I don't know what the real one, you know, the Veramona is. Like, I know it's like $18 or $24, but this one so far has worked just fine to me. Look, no color. So I'm gonna take my favorite powder, uh, MAC 6 Plus. And I'm just gonna blend over. This is like the magic eraser for me. That's a little better. I feel like I'm losing some of the cheek here. So we might go with something else. Let's do one more. Let's try one more. Yeah. Let's go here. And another bougie blush brush. I'm gonna hit this guy. This is one of my favorite palettes. If you, I know it's not sold anymore, um, but if you go on like apps like um, Mercari and Depop, people sell makeup and you gotta check their reviews though. You, got, you can't go in blind because I lost a very expensive palette. It wasn't that the palette was expensive, we did a trade. Don't do trades. Learn from me, don't do trades. I have gotten things that are limited edition or you know no longer sold, very cheap. Okay, so I like this. I've created you know, like a contouring effect with my blush. I wonder if I can use this one as a highlight. Angel. All right guys, I have to tell you about this brush. This is the uh, Wayne Goss, and it is called the Airbrush. It was a limited edition brush, and magically, it came back into stock on Beautylish. Wayne Goss brushes are usually priced at MAC brush price point and um, you really you know if you buy a whole set they're expensive but if you buy one at a time it's not too bad this brush is pretty incredible not only is it one of the softest things I've ever touched on my face but it was 35 bucks so if you are balling on a budget like say you're like oh I can't can't do that if you go onto their site and find other things that you want you could sit there and get um, like a hundred dollars worth of things and then do their three payment plan and I have done that plenty of times it's cool then you get the items that you want so say you want like this brush and you need moisturizer they've got it cosmetics on there they've got some Anastasia on there um, I mean just a lot of stuff and literally the best customer service I mean people actually really do email you like for real humans. You really get amazing service. So I would highly suggest this thing is gonna go away. And it is one of the softest brushes. And it's called the airbrush. You can use it on your entire face. And it's got a weird little point here. I know, this is not a review video. This is a collab and we're doing Urban Decay. But right now, I've just been putting Urban Decay all over my face, so I figure that covers me, right? We're gonna go in with my Light Plus. This is how I set my entire face because it's a soft, super soft powder. Anything that's kind of not blended, like it looks too much like I've got brown here, I got pink here, I go in with the powder. So I am going to turn off the camera, let it cool down, put on my eyebrows, and then we will come back and do eyeshadow because I need that much time for the camera to cool. I'll be back. So I did my eyebrows off camera. There's nothing interesting about my eyebrows. I don't do an amazing job at them. They are never the same because I have no eyebrow hair. 
so I don't film that like ever. Um, I primed my lids with Urban Decay Primer Potion and then I set it with my MAC powder. You know, whatever you have, whatever you're using, make it work. I am not going to grab a separate palette because I am going to go rainbow on you. Uh, this Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette was on sale. Ouch. It is like, I don't know, $35 right now and during the Sephora sale I picked it up so I might as well have gotten it for free. Lots of weird reviews on it. So far I've used it. I've liked it. I am using the um, electric palette as well and a shade from this one. So these are all like limited edition palettes but my thought process in this is get rainbow. If you for some reason want to recreate this look, get yourself some rainbow. That's all you need. So I'm going to take a big fluffy brush and I'm going to start with the yellow. Okay? So I am going higher up and I'm really just getting that all over and blending. I always want to do looks like this, but most of the time when I do like full makeup, it's for work. And I'm not saying that my work would not let me do this because I work at night and yada yada. It's just these kind of things take time. And I think I've said it before, if I was going to create something like this and then it turned out like crap, I'd be kind of irritated if I had to take it all off and then just go to work with no makeup on. So I'm really trying to go more upward because I'm covering all of this down here. So I'm starting here and going up and tilting my brush. It's called Slow Burn from the Electric Palette and I'll just, I'll be weak with it. I'll not saturate the brush because these are really pigmented. At this point I have tilted the brush at a total angle so that way I'm also diffusing and then you realize that I've had to go in a couple times with this. Sad they discontinued this palette. Not because it's almost gone, but because why don't, like I would expect this kind of palette from Urban Decay all the time. I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush over the top, right? Is that what I need to do? Okay, this is Wayne, and this is my favorite to blend edges. Um, so I'm gonna just blend the orange edge with this Jones color. So that way I'm getting that transition from the orange to the yellow. off that brush because I don't want the orange on there anymore. I'm going to hit the yellow and I'm going to turn my brush this way and go over the top of what I just did with the orange. You know people think like these wind gloss brushes are so expensive and like who would do that? But as you get older, you start to like get wrinkly eyelids. And if you're using a really scratchy brush, it like ruins your eyeshadow. And that irritates the hell out of me. Like I've got this great look going and then wrinkly eyelids. I'm gonna pick up a Goss 20. It's very, very pointed. So I'm gonna essentially be using a pencil brush. You could use a Morphe. What do I have that's similar? I have a Makeup Geek um, Defined Crease Brush. That's good, that's a little pointy for me because I'm semi-hooded. You could use a Luxie. Um, they have good little ones, so it doesn't have to be something like this. So I want, out of all the ones I picked, I don't have a red. So we're going to try this color right here called C's and see how it performs I'm directly in my crease. I just hit a little bit of this Savage color from this palette. If you do not have the electric palette, I believe they still have it on Amazon. And it is the most pigmented, because they're like pure pressed pigments, I don't even think that these are supposed to be used on the eyes. I think that they're, some of the colors are not labeled eye safe. Okay, I'm trying to stay low, because I don't want to cover up the orange, you know? Hatter 
It was in the Alice in Wonderland palette too. Um, and I'm going to put a little bit of that in the outer V. And this color is really just going to peep because when I do the blue and the purple, it'll cover like these kind of things, but you'll just get a little bit like, oh, there was some green in there. Okay, I'm going to try something here. Just go with me. I'm going to take this. This is a, a like a softer little brush. It's a Chica Hodo. But you can use, again, any pointer soft brush. I'm going to pick up this green called Thrash. It's like a green yellow. And maybe that'll help blend this out. So I'm still getting... Right here, I am just going over it with a clean MAC 217. Taking the shade Mean from the Full Spectrum palette, I'm just tapping right over the top of that. And then I hit it with the shade Freak. It's a little bit shimmery, but I still wanted to keep that green going. I've taken the color Delirious, and I'm kind of on top of the green, but mostly into the lid. It's a little muddy, but I'm getting the Skittles vibe back into the electric palette with the color urban it's a more vibrant purple and I'm tapping that right on top of the original darker purple so it can be more vibrant and you know I'm getting that purple really going I had to change brushes I ended up going to a makeup geek pointed brush it's like a little pencil brush and I'm continuing with that same color and now I'm going into change it up a little bit with the color jilted I'm kind of showing you right here and I'm just building dimension and adding another layer of purple to really just blend it out. So I kind of like this color called Minx from this palette. So we're going to add some of this Minx. Ooh, it's super soft. On top of the purple before we go to the light blue. Taking a flat shader brush and I'm just packing that blue onto the lid and a little onto the purple. The place where the purple meets, I just kind of dab very gently to blend. I know this seems kind of repetitive. You guys have seen stuff like this before, but you know, I just had to do something crazy. And because my lids are semi-hooded, I'm not gonna cover my whole lid like if I went like this. I'm keeping it kind of low because I wanna keep all that crease work I just did. Like I wouldn't wanna cover that up. And just keeping it real with you guys, there's a lot of blending going on. It's dip back for two layers on this look for this particular shadow. Now I've dipped into the original Spectrum palette for the color Deep End. And this is like a mermaid blue. And I'm just using a MAC 242, any flat shader brush. And I'm blending that into the Minx. So I've got the light blue to the dark blue and then into the purple that Wayne Goss 06 brush and I'm going back and forth over but I'm not smudging anything together just cleaning the edge. Now I take a big fluffy brush and I'm just cleaning up underneath. It's kind of like the step that you would do if you had done the eyes first and then your foundation but I don't roll that way. Now I'm taking the white shade it's called Bump and I'm just doing the um, highlight of the brow bone and I'm also actually doing under the brow. Then I tried to take the brush and hit the shade iced. It's kind of a shimmery color, but it wasn't really working. So I had to use my finger, tap it on, and then it came on too pigmented. So then I had to use a brush. It's kind of like a first impressions because I don't use this palette a lot and I had to try. This is Jouer Cosmetics. I love these eyeliners. They're so good at staying at the waterline, but you get like no product. So I am currently trying to find an eyeliner for my waterline that works. It is not crazy expensive because I have to repurchase it because I'm using it every single day. I'm just taking that liner into my upper waterline and then I wiggle it so it kind of transfers onto my lid. I don't want to do a hard line on my lid. I just did all that work and I have small lid space. No, I don't. I'm not putting anything on the lower lash line. I'm not. I'm not doing it. But don't we need glitter? Then I decide to be oh so extra, pull out the Moon Dust palette and go through and do all the glitters on top. So I do a little green on the outer part, let it peep through, a little blue and a little purple. And then I kind of go back to the green because I really like it. I'm telling you, I may have to do a close up so you can get the glitter sparkles, okay? Um, mascara. 
we're sticking with the theme, guys. We're sticking with the theme. So this is Perversion. This is actually one of my favorite mascaras. Um, then I start adding a coat of Perversion mascara. It is one of my favorites, and we're sticking urban, right? It's boring. I'm going to turn off the camera. Not my liner. I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to put on my falsies, and I'll be back. Okay, so I added a little of the ColourPop um, liner. I think it's Prance. They have a series of like lighter liners. So instead of going for like the stark white, I did like a bluish one. So this is it. We've got to add a lip. I'm adding the color Vanish from the lip palette. Wouldn't suggest it. Very sheer and a big old palette. Someone that likes gloss and likes to reapply. You carry large shit in your bag. I've heard people say that this formula is not the same as their regular lipsticks. So I'll grab a little Disobedient because it's a little more pink. I added Disobedient to it. It's a little more pink. Then I decided it was too pink and went back with the Vanish shade. So kind of mixing the two together for a pinky nude. Try to pick up a little bit of ice. Remember I couldn't really pick it up. Ooh, here we go. That's fun. setting spray all over my face. I don't know why I'm setting it because I'm just going to take this shit off. This is almost bedtime. <laughs> this is the look I created using all Urban Decay products for Miss Fucking Wonderful's Mayday Urban Collab. Collab Urban Decay. Whatever. I will tag it right eventually. If you are, you know, here and you sat through the whole thing, I really appreciate it. And uh, if you see any of these Urban Decay goodies and you're like, hey, I want to see you do a look with such and such. If I have it, I will try it and I will do it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Anyway, I have children that cannot do anything for themselves. And I happen to be in a place in my life where I'm extremely frustrated, so my fuse is very short. Cut. You did good, you did good. Thanks, home skillet. Am I more in focus if I could wait a fuck back here?